one of your first professional experiences to to work with Stephen Covey? Yeah, that was my uh, kind of dream. I, I, I listened to the audio, his audio tape of the Seven Habits. I just couldn't get enough. I thought this is the coolest thing. Uh, you know, it's about principles. It's inspiring. His son had a uh, it was like a network marketing uh, business meeting at his house, and my friend said, "Hey, this is your chance." I walk up the stairs, this nice big house, and uh, and I look down the hallway and I see this bald guy. I'm like, that's, well, you know, older guy. I thought there's only one of those around here, uh, but I'm not going to chase him in his own house. That's a little awkward. Right. And I said, Hey, uh, you know, Stephen, I, I really appreciated your books, but you know, I, I, they've made a difference in my life. And he looks me in the eyes really deeply and he goes, we've met before. And I said, um, I feel like I have, I, I've, you know, I've read your books that much that I feel like I know you. And he goes, no, we, we've met before. I had the chance to be at, at Apple and you know, uh, Steve Jobs would, would do this in meetings. He'd listen a lot. He would pivot and start to disagree with himself at times. And, uh, you know, uh, people would get confused by this. So, well, you're a CEO, like you had a position and you'd say, well, no, this, this, an this answer is better. Right. So a 180, uh, and that's the power of listening. Uh, Ed Catmull, who started Pixar, he would just, uh, answer, fire off answers to questions everybody had there's a unique opportunity to uh, unlock you know, the power of questions. And, you know, at Pixar, uh, Ed and team, they would um, send out a question a week in advance. So rather than an agenda, they would send out a question to just let that marinate, you know, so people come to the table with kind of the space to have, you know, brought answers. And then during, during meetings, it's, you know, how can you lead with, with questions? It creates that space. You know, there, there's much more anchoring power in questions. But yeah, the, the feeling and definitely the business world, you know, to this day, it's a, it's a struggle or it's a wrestle is, you know, and we call it in the book, you know, the expert model, right? There's an expert model of, uh, you know, it's a temptation to kind of show up and kind of say dump expertise, but, you know, put answers, you know, kind of pour answers into people or into the conversation. And I saw this at Apple where you had, you know, people that had written white papers that like nobody else had done it, right? They, their whole PhD was about this technical aspect of something. And yet they would come to the table with kind of egos off the table, um, a, a humility to the universe, an unanswered question, right? That they had to kind of come together to pull something out of the ether and, and something that didn't exist prior to that meeting. They were bringing their perspective and others were bringing theirs, but that the magic would happen. And, and, and essentially, you know, something that would be a revelation. I wrote a letter to Roy Disney. I wanted to work at Disney and uh, I get a call from a recruiter. I didn't know this was going to happen three or four months later. I, I forgot about the letter, but uh, this recruiter calls and says, Hey, um, this is Lisa. You know, Roy said to, to talk to you. And, uh, you know, there's like pixie dust flying everywhere. This is, I've wished upon a star and it's actually happening, right? And all those things, all those achievements in my life, it all led to this moment, right? And uh, it was the weirdest thing to actually have my heart override this where I said, thank you. And, and I ended up hanging up the phone. Um, I, I had it, it was an existential moment that, I realized, hey, right company, it's part of a dream, but that's not right now. It's not what you need. And it was a shock to my system. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't understand it at the time. I didn't understand it. You know, we have this dilemma where we look at it as such a, a definition, right? Employer, employee. Uh, and then that's so easy when we think in those terms, right? Like Covey would say, you want to change people's behavior, change their perception of their role, right? But so often this em employer-employee relationship in our minds dictates that, well, we've got to behave. Then it is it is very kind of disciplinary or performance-oriented and results-based, which it doesn't really motivate or inspire. Um, but it, it begs the question of what if, right? The what if is what if leaders, what if managers saw themselves as co-creators, Mm -hmm. What if they saw their employees as co-creators? And there's nothing necessarily wrong with 
you know, compensation that's individual oriented or results, but are there ways to tie this to a team hmm. success, right? To the impact that, that the team is having. Uh, and we've seen that I, I've seen this work really well um, when they can, you know, when companies can solve for a reward system that it does both, right? It's an and answer. Hmm. Um, if you look at Apple, it's teamwork, uh, innovation and results. Hmm. You know, and 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 it may be in that order in some sense, um, but those things are all important. They're, they're they're the tension that lies between them is, you know, it's a good ecosystem. Walt Disney, when he was younger, he would go to the train station in Kansas City and uh, or Missouri, and the one to L.A. And he'd stand there and he thought, everything that I've want, I want all my dreams, somebody else is doing. Like it's already been done, and that was his. That was his like. I call it a pre-regret or, or a feeling of just, you know, kind of that pain, right? And now he turned that pain into power uh, over time. But I think that's, I think part of it is, is like, don't get discouraged. Find a way to, yes, be successful, uh, you know, in, in your own right, right? But also to create shared dreams, right? It's not just a dream board. It's a shared dream board. How do you be brave, you know, with those you love? Just imagine what you can do, right? With, uh, in, in building with others that will unlock so many things in your world. It will mm -hmm. unlock your dreams and accelerate and amplify things like you wouldn't believe. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe and to stay updated on everything that the action catalyst is up to make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at action catalyst podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore action. And thanks for listening.